Today's saint is um, a wonderful saint. The Pope who canonized him actually said that there was not a saint at that time who had worked more miracles than him, and he was really known as a wonder worker. And a friend of the poor souls, and he was also very much plagued by the devils. But the one story that is most well known perhaps in his, in his life is when he was a young priest and he was going to bed one night after a, after a hard day's work and as he lay there in bed, he heard a shouting, a loud voice and he was calling on Nicholas to wake up and, he, and Nicholas answered the voice and he said that he was a, a former one of the friars who lived in the same monastery that Nicholas was in. He said, I am now in purgatory. And he said, I'd like you to offer up the mass this week for the repose of my soul. Well, he said, I couldn't. I can't because I have the conventual mass. That's the, the daily public mass for the monastery. And so he couldn't offer a requiem mass for them. Well, then the friar went and opened up purgatory to him and showed him a valley in which there were many, many souls suffering, all of them religious. And so he did that as a way of winning over St. Nicholas. Nicholas felt very bad about it, but had to tell him no again. But the next day he went and asked, told his superior all about what had happened asked for permission, permission was granted. So St. Nicholas offered that week's Mass for all of those poor souls and prayed for them intensely during those seven days. At the end of the seven days, that friar appeared to him with many of the other, but not all, but m many of the other religious who were in purgatory, and now they were in glory. They were now seeing God face to face, they said. But there is another story in which St. Nicholas was now off somewhere else, and he was tormented by the devil, but especially during prayer. Have you ever noticed that, how difficult prayer is? Well, it's part of it's because of our human wiring, if you will, that it's hard to stay, actually it's impossible, they say, without any distraction at all, without your mind wanting even if you don't consent, your mind cannot stay perfectly on cue for more than 12 seconds without some sort of distraction trying to make its way in. So that's just the way we're wired. But then there's the devil too. In the case of St. Nicholas, whenever he would pray, the devil would make all sorts of noises, animal noises, it sounded like the wolves growling and lions roaring birds tearing down the roof. Sometimes I think that when you hear the raccoons up there in the fall time and they start scratching around in the, in the ceilings, I think of that as well. But all sorts of things, even at times, one, the devil appeared in the form of a giant bird and actually beat him, beat St. Nicholas, and broke his lamp so that he couldn't read his prayers. Well, he dealt with this all very well. And the other means that he used was scruples. He started thinking to himself during prayer, well, all my penances and my prayers are just getting on everyone's nerves, causing more harm to these people, and I'm not pleasing to our Lord. And that, that's when our Lord appeared to him, when he was having all of these, these fears. And our Lord said, Nicholas, don't worry. Those scruples, all these other distractions, it's all from the devil. I have already written your book, your name in the book of life. And then he was consoled. But we should keep that in mind too with, with regard to our prayer life, that the devil still does all he can to try to distract us from saying our prayers. It could be anything. But the primary time that he starts is right away when your alarm goes off. If he can get you to hit the snooze button, well, that's five 
minutes that you otherwise would have given glory to God. And I think it was a curé of ours who said that the devil told him that if he gets the first moments of the day, if the devil wins the first moment of, the, of our day, that he is sure to get the rest. Meaning, if we don't give that first moment to prayer, the rest of the day won't go well either. So that first moment's important. But then, if you survive the alarm clock attack, then there's thinking about what all you have to do that day. And you think, well, I have to hurry up and get ready and, and do this and do that. And, and before you know it, you're only thinking about work and nothing else prayer-wise is accomplished. Or then there's, there's anxiety. There's worry about this thing or that. There's fatigue and uh, so many other things, scruples. That all comes into play. And for all of it, we should say, be gone, Satan. The most important thing we do on li in life is not our nine to five job, it's not the cooking of meals, it's the prayer. That's our link to Almighty God, and that is the means through which we receive the graces to perform well our nine to five job and our cooking, to do all for the love of God. So whatever you do, learn this lesson today from St. Nicholas. Whatever the devil's tactics to get you not to pray or to pray badly, stick to it. Stick to your prayers. Don't give the devil that first moment of the day. May God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.